This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Hello and welcome to Do Go On, uh, the podcast where we do go on a bit about things. My name is Matt Stewart. I am here with no one at all. I'm in my accommodation in Adelaide because we did a live Adelaide episode this week. How exciting is that? Dave slept on my floor. He's gone now, back to Melbourne, unfortunately, Jess as well. Um, But just a couple of days ago, we recorded a really fun episode in Adelaide, which we're about to do. Uh, Well, you're about to hear anyway. Um, But before we do, I just want to tell you about uh, some other live shows quickly, including, uh, well, mine. I'm still in Adelaide because I'm still doing shows in Adelaide. I'm, I'm here until this Sunday at the National Wine Centre, which is a fantastic uh, venue for comedy and you can see my show there at eight o'clock each night from here till Sunday uh, from there so I finished that on the 17th I go straight to Brisbane uh, doing shows from the 19th to the 24th at the Brisbane Comedy Festival there at the Powerhouse 8 45 in the evening and the, well, the Sunday shows an hour earlier at 7 45 then the Melbourne International Comedy Festival straight after that uh, so a couple of days later March 28th that starts and that's on all the way through till April the 21st seven o'clock Six o'clock Sundays, and that's at the Chinese Museum. And after that, the last stop on the tour at this stage is the Sydney Comedy Festival, uh, and that is from May the 16th. Just three shows, May the 16th, 18th, and 19th, and it's uh, at the Factory Theatre, and that's a 9.30 show. The Sunday show is 8.30. There you go. What a fascinating tale that was. Hopefully, uh, you enjoyed the journey as much as me. So hopefully, I'll see you in Adelaide, Brisbane, Melbourne, or Sydney, And, of course, Do Go On has also got live shows coming up at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. We're doing Saturdays at 3 p.m. at the European Beer Cafe. So you can see us there on March 30th, April 6th, 13th and 20th. And they should be super fun shows. Uh, I think we've mentioned in past episodes we we won't be putting them all out into the feed. Um, So if you want to hear all those episodes, you've got to come along and be in the room. They're way more fun in the room anyway, probably. Hopefully they translate to fun on the recording as well. And then we're going to Koh Samui, our first podcast in Asia on June the 11th till June the 16th. That's a whole week. Uh, It still doesn't make heaps of sense to me, but it's a festival of podcasts. Uh, The Little Dumb Dumb Club is also going to be there and they have a bunch of guests, usually big Australian comedians. And uh, yeah, we do multiple podcasts through the week. Um, I'm hoping to maybe even do my first ever live primates there, but I have not talked to anyone about that. So I don't know if that's even possible, but that's a that's a dream at the moment. Um, so you can check out details for the live podcasts at dogoonpod.com slash events. Uh, and you can check out details about my live comedy shows for Bone Dry at mattstewartcomedy.com slash gigs. Anyhow, let's get on with the show. Let me introduce to you Dave, who's going to introduce us live in Adelaide just a couple of days ago. Over to you, Dave. Yeah! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage us. It's Do Go On! Hi! Yeah. Yes, hello Adelaide, how you doing? Oh, that's nice. Sounds very nice. Hey, this guy came to my show the other night and we reminisced about how a year ago he got drunk and embarrassed everyone. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back, welcome back, but I will let you live that down. <laughs> you, you're back you on will. the cans tonight, this is good. You will you be embarrassing learnt? yourself? <laughs> how, embarrassed how good is this? Oh, yeah. We got a freaking yeah. runway. Yeah, you thought you were up the back. No way. High five all the back here. <laughs> all right. Audience participation. There's no one who's safe tonight. No one. You run like a fucking nerd. <laughs> all right. Even you're not safe. Yeah. All right. This is you. I'll do an impression of you. Okay, great. <laughs> Was that accurate? That felt. I That's... felt like a fucking nerd. Oh, so accurate. So so accurate. <laughs> But guys, how are you? You good? Yeah. Thank you so much for coming out to seeing us here. We, we can probably sit down, to be honest. Yeah, all right. What do you reckon? Mmm. Why? No, they're a lot... <laughs> no, you're a lot closer than I am to you. Yeah, that... I placed the chairs. 
bit of space wouldn't kill you. Felt, it sort of, sort of feels weird to me, but yeah, okay. Yeah, it does actually. <laughs> now you're too far. Come back a bit more. There we go. Um, last night, Dave... <laughs> Dave slept on the floor of Matt's bedroom on some couch cushions. Guys, we have really made it. <laughs> Three couch cushions pushed against each other does not a mattress make, can I just say that? <laughs> but You said you were comfortable. What a way to tell me my hospitality <laughs> wasn't up to scratch in front of some amount of people here yeah. tonight. That was what I was comfortable admitting to you. That's what I meant. It was... No, it was all right. It was okay. I mean... You look great. Thank you. Do I look well rested? Oh, they didn't... Oh, they did not want to say. You, you look like shit. Yeah. <laughs> you have not aged well <laughs> since yesterday. Oh, oh, no. God, I suddenly look my age. Yeah. Oh, no. We just went to the Adelaide Zoo. Have you been there? Yeah. Yeah. Bet you made a fucking mess there, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Bet you embarrassed all the animals, didn't uh, you? Yeah. No, nah, you're great. Good on you, man. I know what you're like. Good on you. Did you shit yourself in front of a panda? <laughs> so they are notoriously judgy. Yeah. We saw one panda of two pandas. The other panda, no one could tell us where it was. We could not find Wang Wang. Was yeah. it Wang Wang? Yeah, we could not find Wang Wang. <laughs> An age-old problem, eh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, that's not a universal thing. All right. <laughs> you can't find Wang Wang. Hey, um, Adelaide, give us a cheer if you've listened to Do Go On before. Thank you. Thank it's quite you. a cheer, thank you. And uh, no shame, no embarrassment. Give us a cheer if you've never heard this show before. A few? There's always You're, a hesitation. Okay, all right. Because I'm looking out and I'm seeing you either clap on your partner's leg or being like, it's this guy. It's this guy. <laughs> which, one, which one of you has not heard the show? Oh, okay. it's you. Dave. <laughs> oh, there he you. is. Yeah. There's the one. I was like, don't be shy, you know, as if like, we're not going to pick on you. And then straight away you're like, you. <laughs> oh, sorry, I meant like, welcome. Yeah. That was a welcoming threat. Yeah, yeah. We're like that in Victoria. You haven't, uh, ha- having fun so far? Yeah. So what did you say? It's great. Okay, what is that about? Oh what are you God. doing there? <laughs> is that an Adelaide accent? No, that's an Irish accent. Irish accent. Ah, to be sure. You piece of shit. <laughs> you piece of shit. Hey, I'm allowed to. I'm, I'm like some percent Irish. <laughs> All right, Matt, I've got to... I've got to Draw a line here because yeah. basically every accent you say, don't worry, I'm one percent, and then whatever that accent is. <laughs> no, nah, I'd be mo- I'd be double digits percent Irish. You're don't a man of the world. Yeah, where are you from, uh, Kel Kelkenny? <laughs> Kil Kilani. I'm a Kilani. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We'll I'm talk later. S- <laughs> I'm really sorry. Um, we'll stop looking at you now. I won't. I'll never stop. <laughs> Blood brother. <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, we really can't see much beyond you, yeah. so you're like the back row to us. So I can't say we won't look at you again, but if I do, I will quickly avert my gaze. Um, <laughs> yeah. Now I'm panicking. Yeah. Dave, help me. All right, I just wanted to ask, uh, give us a round of applause if you're from Adelaide or near to Adelaide. Are most people from Adelaide? <laughs> Great. Very good. Very uh, proud about it. Very cool. Okay, uh, how about in, out of towners? Let me hear you. A few out of towners. Where are you from? You're from Melbourne. Anybody else some, from somewhere not our town? He's from Ireland, he yeah, just said. Yeah, all right. Hey, you should check out the Riverdance episode. It's a classic <laughs> and um, yeah, do yourself a favour. Yeah, he's not kidding. We talked about Riverdance for an hour and a half. I couldn't believe it either. <laughs> <laughs> but we did it. But we absolutely did it. Do you, have you heard of Michael Flatley? The man can tap. <laughs> <laughs> all it's right. true. That is a true thing. He can and he will. He can tap. He's a great tapper. Now, uh, thank you so much for coming out to see us here in Adelaide. First time here. Great to be here at the National Wine Centre. Lots of barrels on the wall. Yeah. We, it's, good, uh, it's good to be surrounded, you know. Yeah. Feel at home. I mean, if they all ruptured at once, we'd all drown. So, <laughs> What a way to go. Yeah. <laughs> I went on a winery tour yesterday uh, and we, at one of the wineries they took us down into like where they used to store wine and now it's just this nice little cellar area. But before we went in, she was like, yeah, so they used to store wine in there and these holes you can see on the ground were how they tested the wine. One guy drowned in the room we're going into. All right, follow me. <laughs> <laughs> Hope they fished him out before they bottled it, you know what I mean? 
Yeah, would that whole batch be ruined, do you reckon? Or would they just not tell anyone? I think they'd just say, oh, oaky and a little bit body. human-y here. <laughs> it's it's got a lot of body. A lot of body, a lot of body, very good. <laughs> that was there, that was right there. I went human yes. yeah. yeah, that was great, no. that was. Wow. No, but it took us too long. Yeah. That's embarrassing. But we got there. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's why I like you being far away, because any time I high-five you, you basically fall off the chair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who wants the, the show to start? All yeah. right. <laughs> what do you say we start the show? If you haven't heard the show before, or just a little reminder, what we do here is uh, we usually uh, take it in turns to report on a topic suggested by a listener that the other two don't know what it's going to be. But because we're going to have some fun here in Adelaide today, we've decided to all do a mini-report <laughs> on overall... So you get a little bit of the three of us, and... Um, the uh, overall theme that we're going for is, Jess, what are we talking about today? Famous animals. Ooh. I did this for Razzle Dazzle. Yeah. I like I, it. To be honest, I didn't realise it was famous animals. I just heard animals. <laughs> I thought it was just animals. Was it famous animals? Yeah. You said famous animals. Uh-huh. <laughs> and you read half a message, which is... Probably about right, yeah. Yeah, I can definitely That's see that. That's an average. So, well, I mean, have you written a, a mini report about something animal related? Yeah. Then you're fine. Good job. Okay, <laughs> great. Yeah, sweet. I'm going to kick things off. Fantastic. Um, and we usually start with a question. Well, that is, most of us usually start with a question. I wrote a question, Dave. Fantastic. Yeah. Great work. Great work. I deserve that. Um, <laughs> uh, I never write the question. I'm an idiot. You've probably figured that out already about the three of us, really. Um, that there isn't one idiot, there's three. But I'm a bit of an idiot. And I forget to write the question until Dave says, and we always start with a question. Like, fuck! Um, but I did write one, and my question is... Which animal attracts tens of thousands of visitors on one day of the year? Ooh. Shut up. Is it Bill Murray adjacent? Perhaps. Ooh. Oh, Farlap. <laughs> <laughs> International Farlap Day. Yeah. Featuring Bill Murray. <laughs> Bill Murray adjacent. Okay. I'm going to see what you're doing here. Murray River. Uh-huh. <laughs> We're talking <laughs> platypus. <laughs> Yeah, that breed of animal that's famous. Hey, okay, but this is actually a competition where we're adding up who gets the most right. So I'm going to say Groundhog. <laughs> <laughs> but what's his name? Oh, Bill Murray? Phil or something like that. Pontatini Tony Phil. I said that. <laughs> For the, re- the recording, it sounded like Jess said it, but that was me. <laughs> you are getting very good at your Jess impression. Oh, I'm Jess. <laughs> I mean, it's not... Wrong. Um, <laughs> to be honest, that is better than expected. So yeah. So uh, yes, my topic is Punk's Tony Phil, made famous by the film Groundhog Day, and oh boy, is it weird. <laughs> the backstory is strange and amazing. Um, groundhogs are creatures within the rodent family that weigh between twelve and fifteen pounds and can live up to eight years. They are omnivores. Uh, they commonly eat grass vegetables, fruit, um, they can climb trees and they can swim. I'm just giving you a bit of background. Oh, you. This You're is right. full David Attenborough here. This is, this is really good stuff. <laughs> Imagine if he was like that. They can swim. Yeah. <laughs> it's super cute. Yeah. Let's go paddle, 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 yeah. paddle, paddle. Just giving you a bit of background here, guys. A bit guys. of background. Um, they, uh, each fall, groundhogs go into hibernation until March. And when they emerge from hibernation, their initial uh, purpose is to find a mate. They ready to fuck. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But we're not talking about just any groundhog. We're talking about the most famous and inaccurate groundhog meteorologist. (laughs) (laughs) At daybreak on February 2nd, Groundhog Day, Punk's attorney Phil awakens from his burrow on Gobbler's Knob. (laughs) (laughs) I haven't been able to find my gobbler's knob in ages. <laughs> <laughs> gobbler's knob. That's great. To be honest, that's why you chose this, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> Started reading and went... <laughs> 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 now, according to the tradition, if Phil sees his shadow and returns to his hole, he has predicted six more weeks of winter. 
But if he does not see his shadow, he has predicted an early spring. He has a, quite a skill set for a groundhog. What? Does anyone ever try and mess with that and like get some sort of light that hovers over him to avoid him seeing his shadow? Yeah, they just they put him in an interrogation room. <laughs> yeah. And thus it changes the weather throughout the, for yeah. the rest of the year. Uh, if, you want, if you want spring. <laughs> um, and I, I do. I do. <laughs> I do. So this tradition has uh, been celebrated since 1887. Um, so it's a really old groundhog. It's a very old groundhog. And they can only live to be eight. Well, no, according to the law, L-O-R-E, not law like, you're under arrest oh, for okay. being a groundhog. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, back to the interrogation room, yeah. sorry. That's a weird, weird law. Um, it is the same groundhog and he has outlived the expected lifespan by about 16 times and is 132 years old. Wow. wow. But I tell you what, he doesn't look a day over 130. <laughs> And uh, apparently he has been sustained this whole time. His secret uh, for a long life, maybe you could take uh, some of this home, <laughs> is uh, drinks of groundhog punch or the elixir of life. Wow. Wait, groundhog punch? Is he drinking other groundhogs? Yes. That's... And he's punching other groundhogs. <laughs> <laughs> so this keeps me young. <laughs> <laughs> So the movie Groundhog Day came out in 1993, I believe, and uh, before that, the average crowd that would gather every year was about 2,000 people, which is still way too many people. (laughs) But the year after it was released, that grew to 10,000, and now it's crowds as large as 40,000 people gather every year. Every year. (laughs) And they stay up all night, and they do this ceremony at, like, 5 in the morning, and I saw... You can YouTube it. Uh, There was just a bunch of... Middle-aged white men in tuxedos singing and dancing to try and do some crowd work and get people pumped before the main event, which is a groundhog. <laughs> so that's And presumably 40,000 people turn up, but then like eight people get a glimpse. Yeah, because it's a groundhog. Yeah. Unless they have big screens, which I wouldn't be that <laughs> That would be amazing. It's on the jumbo screen. So, yeah. So the inner circle, which is the group that facilitate these proceedings, is, a bu- like I said, a bunch of old white dudes wearing top hats and tuxedos. Well, that sounds so sinister, the inner circle. I know. The inner circle. Well, what are they doing to that like, groundhog? But it's something so whimsical and, like, fun and silly, but they're called... It's like sounds like a cult. Yeah, they're still murdering people, yeah. but for a fun reason. The, the inner, so they're a band, the inner circle. You remember that? Anyone remember inner circle? Um, it's not them. Oh. <laughs> That that song, Sweat. How'd that go? A la 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 long, a la 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 long, 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 yeah. come on. That song's fucked. <laughs> Girl, Girl, I want to make, make you sweat. Sweat, sweat till you can't sweat no more. <laughs> and if you cry, cry out, I'm going to oh, push it oh, some no. more. Oh, no. oh. <laughs> abort, abort. Oh. And oh, no. <laughs> Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for bringing that I up. <laughs> because it's so fun, that song. And you're like, la, 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 long, la. Oh, my God. <laughs> and some of you might think that Matt doing the accent there was quite offensive. But you've got to remember <laughs> that 1% of his lineage can be traced back to the Caribbean. So that's fine. What accent? That was my normal singing voice. <laughs> I Dare liked you. that, though. I like, we should do more duets. Okay, that's a no. <laughs> and even the, even the... Yeah, no, no one else was into it. That means they want me to sing alone. Well, if, if they want it, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I got you, babe. <laughs> Wait, are you Sonny or Cher? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, the inner circle, not... the. Uh, Creepy, rapey song, guys. Um, The vice president of the inner circle prepares two scrolls in advance of the actual ceremony, one proclaiming six more weeks of winter and one proclaiming an early spring. So Phil, they get him out of his little box and they they hold him up and everyone goes, Woo, a groundhog! Which if they saw in the wild, they'd be like, Ugh, groundhog. But (laughs) this one, they're like, Woo! That's my impression of everyone in the crowd. Woo! Anyway, um, he's, uh, he's held and he, he, they put him up on the top of the ceremonial tree stump and, uh, and he whispers to the president of the inner circle. I mean, 
Are you hearing this? Yes. In a language known as groundhoggies. No. It do- I mean, the ceremonial tree, it does sound like someone is about to sacrifice a groundhog. The groundhog, yes. Yeah. If he predicts more winter, they slaughter him. <laughs> um, what he whispers in his ear is, girl, I'm going to make you sweat. <laughs> <laughs> Sweat till you can't sweat okay, no okay. more. <laughs> and if you cry out... <laughs> um, no, so he, he whispers to him in their common language, groundhoggies. Um, only the president can understand groundhoggies and only if he's holding his magical presidential wooden cane. <laughs> In one place I read only the current president can understand groundhoggies, which really makes it sound like they kill any former presidents. <laughs> um, but, it's, but then it's like, oh, it's only when he's holding the magical wooden cane, of course. <laughs> you know, your language stick. Um, yeah, yeah, it's the talkie stick. We, we've all the got The talkie one. stick, yeah. So he whispers in and he says, oop, seen a shadow, or, oop, haven't seen a shadow. And then uh, they make a prediction and uh, everyone just loses their mind and parties. Um, he first received his name in 1966. So they've been doing this since the 1880s. 1966? Uh, no, 1961. 1961. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was close. Thank God. Oh, we would have heart to be is genuinely racing. Have to hear a boring anecdote about a team no one cares about. <laughs> um, the origins of the name Phil are a bit unclear, but some people have speculated that he's named indirectly after Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. Which makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's a very clear connection. We can all see why that would make sense. So I don't need to try and explain and that. And at all. Prince Philip wasn't alive in 1886 either, was I he? I reckon he was. Oh, yeah. yeah. Have you seen that guy? Yeah. He's the only one on earth older than that groundhog. <laughs> and boy, does he look his age. Wow. Yeah, that's the thing. He looks bad. Yeah. And it's like, you know, you're mega wealthy. Me? No, God, no. <laughs> Prince Philip. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Prince, you're oof. No. Um, <laughs> Dave slept on cushions on your floor. <laughs> that that sentence was never addressed to any of us. <laughs> so it's like you should. He should probably have access to like better face creams. You know. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's that, what I'm getting at. Do the do face creams work? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the groundhog should get under that. I heard someone confidently go, mm-hmm. So I was like, yeah, yeah. they do. <laughs> That's all I need is somebody to tell me, someone to tell me something confidently and I believe it. Okay, great. Um, okay. And what it. did you mean he was named incorrectly after Prince Philip? Indirectly. Oh, right. I heard incorrectly. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Like, well, like, Prince we'll... Philip's name isn't Pontatoni, so it does feel <laughs> slightly incorrect. Pontatoni. He, they said Prince Philip, and I said, yep, yep, Pontatoni yeah. Phil. Yeah. Sorry, it's on the birth certificate now, we can't <laughs> change it. Yeah. Well, um, if, you, if you sort of think about it as well, so he makes this prediction every year, has for 133 times now, and uh, as of this year, he has made 133 predictions, predicting an early spring 19 times. And the inner circle, in keeping with kayfabe, the only other time I've seen this word, kayfabe, wrestling and weird cults. Um, they claim a 100% accuracy rate, um, which isn't correct. <laughs> <laughs> a kayfabe is the agreed storyline yeah. behind the wrestling of you. Want. So, I like, wrestling when wrestlers go home and they're all friends, if they're seen out in public, they have to be like, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> Like if they sit next to each other on a plane and a fan looks over at them, the whole plane they have to be like, I hate you, yeah. I hate you. 16 hours. I did that anyway on yeah, the, when yeah, we flew to the UK. You're very annoying to sit next to. Yeah. <laughs> and I sat in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> it was good fun. And Matt still fell asleep during The Incredibles 2. Three times! He watched that movie so many times! <laughs> I, don't know look, I was watching with him. I was watching his screen and every time I'd sort of look at him to see if he reacted to something, he's doing this. <laughs> it was cute. a very soothing film. I don't yeah. know why, why you're still talking about that. <laughs> Months ago. <laughs> let go. Am I right? You've got to let go of the past. <laughs> <laughs> don't let him have that. Um, but, uh, okay, so they, they say he's been right 100% of the time. Uh, impartial estimates place the groundhog's accuracy between 35 and 40 <laughs> percent. So not that amazing. Um, and a couple of other sort of quick fun facts. In 1995, 
Phil flew to Chicago for a guest appearance on the Oprah Winfrey show. (laughs) Do they let Oprah hold the stick so she can talk to him? No, only the president can oh, okay. talk to him. <laughs> the president's translating You can't just to learn Oprah. groundhog ease, Dave. Oh, of course. You have to be the president of this weird cult club uh-huh. and have you hold your, talk, your stalky stick. It, uh, Dave, you can learn groundhog ease, but it takes a la 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 long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> How, how long have you been wanting to get that in there? <laughs> I, I think a thing and then I say it and then I instantly regret it. You know my process. <laughs> it's not a lot of thought. Um, and just to, just to sort of finish up here as well, Phil isn't universally adored. I know everyone in this room is a big fan. Huge, huge um, fan. But he's a bit of a bad boy <laughs> and even has a criminal record. <laughs> <laughs> he he mauled Oprah. <laughs> She's like trying to speak uh, Groundhog It turns out she insulted him. <laughs> yeah. um, in 2015, uh, the Merrimack Police Department in New Hampshire issued an arrest warrant for Punks of Tawnyville, having failed to disclose the extreme amount of snow that would ensue. <laughs> <laughs> and then in 2018, the Monroe County Sheriff's Office in Pennsylvania issued an arrest warrant for him for deception citing that winter was only supposed to last six more weeks, which would have ended on March 16, and the county suffered a snowstorm on the second day of spring. <laughs> They're like, let's get him! So anyway, so I was thinking next year we could go to, um, to see Punk's Tony Phil. Yeah, I miss that. Where is he? Punk's Tony. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, that does yeah. make sense. Oh, sorry. Um, but you have to go up to his, his burrow on Gobbler's Knob. Oh, right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That'll never not be funny. It's still good. And that still is good. my report on the bad boy, Punks Attorney Phil. Yeah! <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. You're so welcome. My turn. <laughs> Great. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I had this topic suggested directly. I'm doing my stand-up show downstairs and uh, a listener came earlier in the week and he said, oh, what, are you, what topic are you doing? I said, I don't know. <laughs> and he suggested one and I'm doing it. Right. Anyway, is Sam here? Sam Douglas? Yay! Yeah! All right, Sam. Thanks so much, Sam. You're an influencer. <laughs> <laughs> so my question is, this is a local topic. Oh. Question is, who is believed to be South Australia's only bush ranger? In brackets, it's animal related. <laughs> Kangaroo Jack? Oh, no, that's a good attempt. I Sounds don't good, doesn't it? Kangaroo. I'd never heard of this. You don't have a stab? Let me throw it over to the. Greg. <laughs> Burr. Burr. Bill. Bill? Greg, Greg Bill. Greg Bill. Greg Bill, the Bush Ranger. No, we don't know. Buffalo Bill? Does any, anyone here? Anyone I will here keep trying. Not Sam. Outside Sam. of Sam, does anyone heard of this? Great. All right, that's good. <laughs> good topic, Sam. It's, uh, his name is John Francis Peggotty, a.k.a. the Birdman of Coorong. Is Coorong a place? Thank God. It's the wrong place. <laughs> Sam has really led you astray. <laughs> Sam wrote this Wikipedia page. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have anyone from Kurong in? Sort of. Sort of. Sort of. We'll take that. We'll take that. Do you We're have local. ancestors from Kurong? Matt probably does as well, yeah. to be honest. You have ancestors, yeah. I got a little Kurong yeah, yeah. blood in me, yeah. yeah. What, what's Kurong like as a place? Oh, it's very nice. Very beautiful. Really? Is it far from here? Oh, beautiful. I'm going to try and visit this week. I you in particular. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Careful, he will turn up at your door. <laughs> so a lot of this story is disputed, including the fact that he's South Australia's only bush ranger and also the fact that he existed at all. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, what are you doing? <laughs> but it, it's, a, it's a fun story all the same. Um, here it is. <laughs> 
Hey, this one a little bit early in for you, mate. All right, ready? You know this one. Whereabouts are you from in Ireland? I don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like it when you crack yourself up. John Francis Peggotty was born in Limerick, Ireland in 1864. A good year. Oh, well... <laughs> He was born prematurely and grew to the height of a seven-year-old with childlike facial figures. F- facial figures? What am I trying to say there? Features. Features, great. Thank was you. He, was he seven when he was the height yeah, of a seven-year-old? Yeah, was he seven or? when he was seven height? He, he was, yeah. He was the height of a seven-year-old when he was seven and also when he was eight, nine and right, ten. Okay. Yeah. He did, right, okay. okay. Waiting for that it's a weird. Birth. It's a weird way for it to be described not giving him a height, but that's... Yeah, it's all... No, all seven-year-olds are a certain height. Yeah, I know. It's, anyway, <laughs> this is off the official document. Um, <laughs> after leaving Ireland, he spent some time in South Africa where apparently he spent uh, a bunch of it with ostriches. <laughs> all right, anim- oh, animals are involved now. <laughs> <laughs> I was starting to worry. <laughs> uh, from, South, from South Africa, he moved to Adelaide where he started a gang of boys. Boy gang. <laughs> Come on, boys. <gasps> I want to start a gang of boys. That'd be fun. Yeah, do it. Are we your, are we your gang of boys? Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> using their smaller stature to their advantage, the gang's MO was sliding down chimneys to steal jewellery. <laughs> How do you get out? Bloody good question. <laughs> Back up the chimney? Out a window that you could have got in in the first place? (laughs) I guess you get in, you can unlock the door from the inside. Sure. And clean up the soot that you brought down the chimney. Yeah, they were were a gentleman gang of boys. (laughs) (laughs) Boy gang. According to karongcounty.com.au, gold jewellery was his... Did I say that wrong? No, you're right. No, they're just laughing at that that source. That website. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) that that exists. (laughs) (laughs) Karongcounty.org. Pretty exciting stuff. Well, anyway, according to that resource, (laughs) gold jewellery was his favourite. And the website said, eventually this trade caught up with him as he had a tendency to flaunt his winnings by draping the load over his body and parading around half naked. Like Mr. T. Yeah. (laughs) I pity the fool who did not climb down this chimney. (laughs) Uh, Peggotty would wear the spoils of his robberies, covering himself... From head to toe in the shiny bling. <laughs> and then, yeah, heading around town. It seems silly, but anyway. <laughs> People are like, that's my gold necklace. <laughs> but I'm also imagining him running through the streets like Dave runs, so that's pretty funny. <laughs> How have you made it this far in life? Dave, it was with his shirt off, though. <laughs> All right, take two. <laughs> Oh, wow, what a rig. Look at that. (laughs) Guys, I need you to play along. (laughs) 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 Yeah, you're impressed. All right. (laughs) The majority of his gangmates were eventually arrested, arrested, uh, but he avoided that, and he laid low for quite a while. (laughs) Laid low, still covered in gold. (laughs) (laughs) The next time Peggotty was seen was near the town of Meningi. 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 Still bedazzled with jewellery. <laughs> <laughs> o- only now, riding on the back of an ostrich. No. Yeah. That's <laughs> sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might question where the man found an ostrich in 1800 South Australia. Mm, I do question that, yes. Well, it seems, uh, people have looked into this, it seems that there were wild ostriches in the Coorong area of the time. Apparently, farms in the region used to breed them for their feathers and uh, then released some after the business was no good. And um, up until 40 or 50 years ago, there were still feral ostriches in the Narang Peninsula and Coorong area. Huh. And then what happened to them? (laughs) They all flew to heaven. (laughs) (laughs) When you said your fact about them, you know, being in that area, I heard an audible... Wow. <laughs> From over here. That was great. Hey? Wow. wow. You're killing it. Matt, Matt, Matt. Great job. <laughs> As a bush ranger on ostr- ostrich back, ooh, 
It is said that Peggotty was responsible for over a dozen holdups in South Australia. <laughs> the man was running out of room on his body for all his booty. <laughs> <laughs> he started putting it on the ostrich's <laughs> neck as well. That is a fucking blinged up ostrich. Yeah. Now that ostrich sort of has the attitude that goes with it too. Mm. It's like, I know I look good. <laughs> so that, In mean, ostrich. That's all sort of fun crime. He's also thought to have killed two travellers. Anyway, all... But the jewels! <laughs> all this while, he avoided capture by the authorities, but his luck soon ran out. When on September the 17th, 1899, only two years after the Saints played in the ignore, inaugural <laughs> season of the VFL... Anyway, on that date... Hold on, hold on. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> on I, the 17th, I can go heckle him from back yeah. there. 17th of September, 1899, he tried to rob a man named Henry Carmichael. Carmichael was coming ashore on his boat after a day of fishing, uh, and he was ambushed by Peggotty, armed on ostrich back. <laughs> but Carmichael refused to yield. Peggotty fired yeah. off a couple of shots at the fisherman, but missed. Has he got a gun or is he shooting his ostrich? <laughs> pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's got a couple of ornamental pistols. Oh, fun. Blingy, blingy guns. Um, so he missed. Now Carmichael was holding the upper hand and also his rifle. <laughs> and Peggotty fled on his ostrich. <laughs> Carmichael had his horse tied up nearby the dock and quickly jumped on board and galloped off in pursuit. Wait, ostriches are pretty fast, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they're really quick. And mm. the sandy terrain was better suited to the ostrich, and Peggotty pulled away. <gasps> Carmichael cut his losses and dismounted the horse, drew his rifle, and started firing off at Peggotty, hitting both Peggotty and his noble steed. I'm more sad about the ostrich, to be honest. <laughs> Hold on, do you mean ostrich, or did the guy accidentally shoot his own horse? <laughs> 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 the noble steed. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> My own horse shot in the head. No, he shot Piccadilly and then he was really excited about it so he went to tell his horse. (laughs) (laughs) Buttercup, I did it! (laughs) Buttercup was his best friend. Oh, Buttercup. They grew up together. It was a bloodbath. As as little ponies. (laughs) Oh, that's not how it works, but... (laughs) What? (laughs) Uh, So, Carmichael rode up. Uh, up, up the sandbank to make sure uh, he was dead. He found the dead ostrich, but no sign of Peggotty, just a trail of blood leading into the bushes. According to the Brand South Australia website... <laughs> the what South Australia? Brand. Brand. It's all Brand. about promoting South Australia. Oh. The eccentric bushranger was never seen again, but his stash of gold chains and jewels are said to be buried deep in the Coorong. What's the Coorong? I thought it was a town. The area? area. Oh, area. Yeah, it's deep in the area. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's buried deep in the area. Skeptics say this story is a load of ostrich shit, as it was, <laughs> was only discovered in recent years after the town of Meningi called out for interesting stories about the area to use as promotion. <laughs> <laughs> According to Meningi Progress Association member Denise Mason... When we lost the water out of the lake, Meningi was becoming a dying town and tourism was probably the only thing that could get it back on the map. But without water, we had to find some other ways. The story Bullshit. <laughs> the sto- they fully stand by it. The story is said to have been uncovered in an old magazine article titled The Birdman of Coorong, but many seem to have doubts about its authenticity. Writer Rod Easdown is a sceptic, saying that if you visit the town asking for information, you'll be handed a photocopied story that looks like it came from an old magazine. It seems to be the only thing ever written about Peggotty. Seems, you know, slightly sus. Hmm. Goes on to say, the trouble is that learned histories of Australian bushranging don't mention Peggotty, and the only decent hits on Google take you to the story they hand out in Meningi. I suspect Peggotty is the figment of some Adelaide PR guy's imagination. It's a bit of a downer. I, I toyed with just p- pretending this is real. But anyway, um, <laughs> they, they stand by it. But yeah, it does sound a little bit sus. And is that PR guy's name Sam? <laughs> <laughs> Sam Douglas, yeah. Because yeah. you're really getting the story out there. <laughs> Either way, the town unveiled a statue of a saddled ostrich in 2013 where tourists now commonly pose. Uh, do, have you, do you know what I'm... Have you now... Does it ring a bell now? Oh, that's what that ostrich... Right. right. No, yeah. no, this is quite an old story. It goes back... 
<laughs> it's back to the 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's where you're wrong. Um, it's it's anyway, quite old. Anyway, he d- he's so... Well, it's a pretty great description, even if it's you know, a, a fictional character. It's a great description. Described as looking like a bearded child, naked above the waist and draped in gold jewellery, brandishing two ornamental pistols. He could be described as Australia's most eccentric, eccentric bushranger, if he ever existed. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's my report. What do you reckon? Real? I reckon if he shaved his beard off, he could look like just any regular seven-year-old. <gasps> Oh, oh what, Dave, what? <laughs> you crawled into the scrub and onto the stage. Yeah, I did emerge from the bushes tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and here's my ostrich. Ah, he was shot. That's right. Forgot um, that bit, forgot that bit. I choose to believe. Yeah. Yeah. What do you guys reckon? <laughs> you reckon woo? Mm. Yeah, that makes sense it. Dave, me. what do you think? I want to believe. But? Oh, but nothing. I do believe. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to, made myself believe, and now I believe. I think okay, that, great. that yeah. was great. Cool. Matt, well done. after your research, you're thinking it's probably real, isn't it? I think it's probably definitely real, yeah. <laughs> you know, back history's pages are littered with lost factoids. and I mean, they're not littered with it, actually. They're not littered with the lost factoids of lost factoids. Facts and stories. And this is another in a long line of fantastic stories <laughs> lost to history's page. But luckily found in a magazine article <laughs> and handed in to the tourism board of a small area with a dried up lake. <laughs> it's a tale as old as time. And um, I look forward to hearing it yet again. I assume you've got a similar one to tell us right now, Dave. Well, first of all, we've got to give Matt a big round of applause for the Birdman. We have one final animal-based report to go, and I'm going to get onto it now with this question. If you can answer me this. Don't look. Well, where you've written question is blank. Dave didn't write a question! Mm. Damn it! It's true! It's true! Uh, I'm going to hang out back here for a bit. Jess, he did it topless. (laughs) (laughs) Who did it topless? (laughs) Shut up, Matt. This is cool. We've never done one with uh, wireless mics before. Oh, it's before. the best. Look at this. Hello. Right. How do it's you do? It's fun. Oh, forgot so something some down here. <laughs> seats over here. This is great. All, oh, always seats. great on an audio podcast. Yeah. Uh, why don't hey. I, for us to wonder. You, oh, what? Dave. Well, good. You, thanks, actually, Dave. How are you? Yeah, I'm quite good. My name's Josh. How are you? <laughs> Dave, you fucked it, mate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's no, a real Matt. boring new character you've come up with. <laughs> Oh, no, no. Lo- sorry, lovely, lovely. No, I'm, J- I'm Josh. I'm having a great time at the show. <laughs> <laughs> I, li- I like leaving Dave on the stage alone. <laughs> Don't worry, Jess. I got this. <laughs> Dave, it's probably I- how you prefer it. I'm sitting in the third row and I cannot see you. You are. <laughs> Can you sit up, mate, please? Yeah, sit up. Do your mother not teach you to have? Oh, a there he is. Posture? <laughs> Hi, everyone. Great to be here. Um, why don't I ask my question and you can uh, ask your chums around you. Okay, Josh they... is a real good chum slash <laughs> character of mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll help you out, Dave. I'm Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Josh, I'm so sorry about this. <laughs> um, okay, my question is, uh, Harry is the, uh, is the name. Harry, oh, here was my question. Harry is, was the first animal of his kind in Australia. But what kind of animal you think was Kate Harry? Joe? What, what? Yeah, I, I found the first ever wombat. <laughs> I'm gonna, and what? his name was Harry. <laughs> and here he is mm. now. <laughs> yeah, you know, anim- animals have Adam and Eve stories as well. Wombats yeah, right. were Greg and Harry. <laughs> they had two boys. <laughs> they did have two boys and ah. square poop. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's Harry. Anyway, Josh, what do you reckon? Emu. Emu, first, oh, good choice. First ever emu. Cane well, toad? So Cane this. toad, Dave, what do you reckon? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help out the audience and say it's not a native animal. Does anybody know? Horse. It got here somehow. Horse. Anyone have an idea? Camel. <gasps> <laughs> Look, I don't want to dust your dreams, but he was a camel. Whoever said camel. <laughs> <laughs> well, done. Yeah, well done. Yes. Well done. Yes, you are right to clap. You are right to clap. I, was, I, there a, was there like a nursery rhyme or something about Harry? Why am I thinking something the camel had? One hump. Alice. Alice. Thank you. 
So it's not I, Alice the camel. I was like, Harry doesn't fit in what I'm in the tune I'm thinking of. That's what I've been thinking this entire time. No, I'm afraid it's not Alice. It is Harry, who was the first ever camel in Australia. And was actually named after Prince Harry. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Indirectly. <laughs> yeah, indirectly. Oh, indirectly, yeah. Or incorrectly. Mm. I was, I was going to do a primate-related uh, story, but I didn't want to burn any sweet material on this <laughs> stupid podcast. <laughs> good, good podcast. Yeah, not, on this si- not on this side project. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so has, has anyone heard of Harry the Camel? No. We've got, got a hand going up. Hand up the back. Good to have you in. Hand good up the in. back? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, Dave I'm is a th- puppet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm, asking, I'm taking requests. <laughs> yeah, I'll take a hand up the back. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> no, no water for you on your report. Off you go. Had oh, your com- time. I have also chosen a local topic. <laughs> la 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 long. La 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 long. I'm going to dr- sing that every time you drink now. Oh, okay. For the rest of our lives. Well, I'm pretty thirsty, Jess. <laughs> na la 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 long, a la 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 long long le long long long. Oh wow! Can you believe I drank that much? <laughs> okay, Harry the Camel. We start with a man called John Ainsworth Horrocks. Bit of a local hero. Do you know John Horrocks? Horrocks. I'm getting a nod over here. You know? Do you know him personally? Yeah. <laughs> Born in 1818. Wow. Wow. You are looking good for your age. You look fantastic. <laughs> wow. See? Face cream. You remember him. Uh. <laughs> Honestly, Matt. I keep leaving it in your bathroom. <laughs> in the communal house we share. All right. Before we get to Harry. Uh, 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 do you know Harry the Camel as well? Not at all. Oh, Not great. All. Well, strap in. Great. Well, first, John Ainsworth Horrocks was born in 1818 in Lancashire, England. One of eight children, do they know what was causing it? It's too many. Too many kids, too many kids. Uh, he was educated in Paris for two years, but ran away to join his family who had since moved uh, from England to Vienna in Austria. So his family sent him to another country and then moved away to another. <laughs> Get a hint, John. Yeah. <laughs> You're Did the they least, tell him? He's the least favourite of eight kids. Yeah. So. That sent him away. sucks. Uh. But he arrived right here in South Australia in 1839 on his 21st birthday. What a present. (laughs) Welcome to the big smoke. Are you trying to suck up? Yeah. They've already bought tickets and turned up. You don't have, like, stop kissing their asses. Look, to be honest, I was mocking you a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, then proceed. (laughs) Proceed. He's moved from Paris to 1830 South Australia. <laughs> Bit of a difference. I mean, you keep up with Paris these days, though, am I right? They but do back call then. it the Paris of the South. <laughs> Australia. <laughs> I thought that was Mount Gambia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, John was six foot two. Dark haired with blue eyes and possessed a rugged constitution. <laughs> yeah. Dream boat. Uh, the What's John's deal? Is he anything? Oh. <laughs> put in a good word for you? <laughs> There's no dog. What about, what about our old man over here? Will you put in a good word for Jess? <laughs> Let me know. So, uh, the Australian Dictionary of Biography says. The Australian Dictionary of Biography. Yep. Which is a favourite source of Matt's, and I've dug, yeah. dug into it today. It's a fantastic source. It's fantastic. Do yourself a favour. It's fantastic. If you're looking for something to do on this Sunday afternoon, I'd just dive in. <laughs> <laughs> so much to learn. Mm. <laughs> uh, so it says about him uh, on arriving in South Australia, he brought with him a family servant, a blacksmith, a shepherd, four merino rams, sheep dogs, tools, sufficient clothing for five years, and a church bell. <laughs> No kitchen sink, though. <laughs> it's quite an eclectic mix, really, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, he's thought of everything. Five years of clothing. He'd be a nightmare to travel with. You know those people who just pack way too much? Oh, my God. Imagine the carry-on luggage, five years of clothing. Oh, yeah. It'd be insane. Uh, at the time in Adelaide, before people could be awarded land for farming, they had to wait for a land survey. So they went through different areas at a time and then divvied up the land. But John wasn't the waiting type, and he just went out and just started farming anyway. 
Finally, the land survey came back and awarded him much less land than he was actually using, but he still managed to get 9,000 sheep and is believed to have established the first vineyard in the Clare district. What a guy! Wow. Sorry. Wow. Wow. I mean, respect in the National Wine Centre. Yeah, he gets shit done. I like that. Uh, In 1842, following the death of his father, he went back to Britain but returned to South Australia in uh, early 1844 because he had financial difficulties. But when he returned, he was bored of the farming lifestyle and he wanted adventure. So old John rented out his old farming properties and organised an expedition to find more agricultural lands near Lake Torrens. You guys know this lake? No. Guys, this is local reference after local reference. I mean, <laughs> I haven't heard you say wow once. <laughs> he said, quote, or he later wrote, I wanted a more stirring life. Stirring. Stirring. That's a good word. Mm, I, I like, like that. Let's use stirring more. Okay. Yeah, Matt, lift your stirring game. Okay. Come on, mate. All right, I'll, I'll do that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to get government backing for his expedition up to the lake, but couldn't raise any money, so he had to raise the cash privately. The trek was supposed to take four months, and the small party consisted of six men, two carts, six horses, 12 goats, and Harry, the first ever camel in Australia. <laughs> Harry was one of nine camels loaded onto a boat at the Canary Islands. Quick question. Do yeah. they know what was causing it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing it was some sort of camel breeding yeah. program. Well, he was one of nine. Too many. Loaded onto a boat at the Canary Islands. One then- more. Get oh, no. one more camel. Or lose four of them. Well, they lost most of them, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, they got to London, then they sent six to Australia, and when they finally got to Adelaide, Harry was the only one left alive. I'm yeah. still standing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's grooving on the way out. Camels can last a long time without water, but not that many months. Wow, go Harry. Maybe he was just the most, most ruthless. Oh. And like, if there was any kind of water source, he would like bully the others out of it. Maybe we don't like Harry. Do we like Harry? Well, let me describe Harry to you. He's a camel. <laughs> End of description. <laughs> so, Harry seemed to be a useful addition as he was able to carry heavy loads of up to 160 kilograms and was able to travel for two days without water. Also very good on the sand. But Harry also proved to be bad-tempered, often biting the men and the goats, <laughs> which were being looked after by famous Aboriginal goat herder Jimmy Morehouse, who was also bitten multiple times. <laughs> but if you've seen the things that Harry's seen... I can understand him acting oh, no. out a little bit. I mean, to survive in that boat, he had to bite five other camels to death. Yeah. <laughs> and then eat them one by one. Is that what happened, Dave? Yeah. Well, I read between the lines a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so they've got all these all, uh, six men and Harry and a few other things. They took off in late July with the six of them. They proceeded north to Mount Remarkable, where nothing of note happened. <laughs> huh? <laughs> huh? Huh? That took me a little too long. I added that in the Uber on the way here. <laughs> uh, then they went into the Flinders Ranges where Horrocks discovered a pass which was named after him. I assume it was named after him later. Ah, okay, yeah. They didn't just come across a pass. He sees a pass, says Horrocks Pass. Ah! He's like, that's a weird coincidence. Yeah. And then he reads the description and it's like about his life. And he's yeah. like, oh my goodness. <laughs> That'd be sick. Uh, In late August, they decided to split the party. No, never split the party! (laughs) Which, as we all know from our old mates Burke and Wills, all good explorers do at some stage in their careers. Our main man, John Horrocks, carried on ahead with Samuel Thomas Gill and Bernard Kilroy, as well as Harry the Camel. So the three went ahead with the camel, they left the others behind. On September 1st, something happened that John Horrocks would be remembered for. Horrocks himself described the situation in a letter. This is in the words of John. Quote, In going round this lake, which I named Lake Gill, presumably after his mate, Kilroy, who was walking ahead of the party, stopped, saying he saw a beautiful bird, which he recommended me to shoot to add to my collection. (laughs) Great guy. My gun being loaded with slugs in one barrel and ball in the other. (laughs) Metal ball, I imagine. (laughs) Not his balls. I stopped the camel to get at the shot belt, which I could not get without the camel laying down. 
why? Oh, it was too high. I understand. <laughs> Camels are quite tall. I was like, why does it have to lie down? Because I was imagining it underneath the camel, which is a stupid place to put a bag. <laughs> and you wouldn't do that. It's on top of the camel and you can't reach it because you're an average sized person. Camels are quite tall. Get the camel to lie down. You can get access to things. I understand now. Are you with, it? Are you with us now? <laughs> this is Again, to- I'm an idiot. <laughs> this is back to the letter. Whilst Mr. Gill was unfastening it, I was unscrewing the ramrod into the wad over the slugs, standing close alongside of the camel. At this moment, the camel gave a lurch to one side and caught his pack on the lock of my gun, which discharged the barrel I was unloading, the contents of which first took off the middle finger on my right hand between the second and third joints and entered my left cheek by my lower jaw, knocking out my front row of teeth from my upper jaw. Thank God he's writing this in a letter. (laughs) Not like an audio book, you know? So, he'd been shot by his own camel, Harry, <laughs> through the finger and into his jaw. <laughs> he was now lying badly wounded. Harry is ruthless. <laughs> <No. Yeah. laughs> Harry's bit everyone and now he's like, I'm going to fucking shoot this guy. <laughs> he's learning. He's, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Clever girl. <laughs> <laughs> he's adapting. Uh, His colleague, Mr. Gill, looked after John whilst the other man, Kilroy, ran to get the help. He covered 65 miles or 105 kilometres in 24 hours on foot through the desert, which is an average speed of 4.23 kilometres an hour. Or if he had just sat down for the first 23 of those 24 hours, he would have travelled at 105 (laughs) kilometres per hour. It's pretty impressive, isn't it? Yeah. Look at that. Uh, I'll get going in a minute. Oh, I've only I've been sitting here for 23 hours. <laughs> then he took off. To be honest, they should have taken uh, Harry because camels can run at a top speed of 40 miles per hour. Ah. Do you know that? I do now. Fun fact alert. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's rel- I mean, wouldn't whip it out at a dinner party. I would never recommend doing that, Jess. Yeah. <laughs> Are you, you saying you wouldn't flop your chop at a dinner party? Not in polite company, no. <laughs> Certainly not in Adelaide. (laughs) 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 Someone was disappointed. I don't know if the uh, the mics picked that up, but someone went, oh. (laughs) It's a lovely lovely sentiment. That's why they came to the show. Yeah. Uh, Kilroy is the man who ran. He returned with a man and a horse, and they transported John Horrocks, the injured man, to a depot where they rested for five days. They travelled a little further before a doctor from Adelaide could meet them. Sadly, Horrocks developed an infection and died 23 days after being shot by Harry. That that letter I read, it was actually his last letter, 1846. So, there you go. Before he died, Horrocks ordered that Harry the camel be shot (laughs) so that, quote, he couldn't hurt anyone else. (laughs) But preferably just through a finger and then the cheek. So he was vengeful on the camel. (laughs) He's killed. He'll kill again. (laughs) (laughs) He's got a taste for blood. (laughs) He didn't mention that his friend uh, Kilroy should also be shot. So in future, he couldn't recommend people shoot birds to add to his collection. That started it all, but anyway. How do you enjoy nature? If I am, you know, out in nature and I see something I like, I shoot it. That's (laughs) beer. Take it home. Take it home. Yeah, I mean, you took your gun with you to the zoo today. (laughs) Yeah, I do. Hey, I got a couple of great zebras in my bag. Yeah. If you see that there aren't any zebras at the Adelaide Zoo, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> I, t- I saw a beautiful uh, beautiful tree, <laughs> shot that. Yep. Saw a beautiful view, it was sort of like a sunset. That was harder to shoot, but I did. <laughs> shot right at it a lot. And yeah, I think it got away. I'm <laughs> um, sad to report that the station hand shot Harry, but not before he bit another stockman on the head. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Harry holds the distinction of being the first camel in Australia, and John Horrocks holds the distinction of being the only explorer shot to death by his own animal. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the end of my report, but do you want a couple of camel fun facts? Yeah. <laughs> Always. Will they be as fun as they run pretty fast? Yeah. <laughs> to be honest... Oh, they run pretty fast. <laughs> to be honest, they are taken from that exact source. <laughs> so. All right, hit us. Do you know this about camels? To keep sand out of... Everything. Camels have their eyes. <laughs> have their eyes? Yeah. That is interesting. <laughs> they have three eyelids and two rows of eyelashes to keep sand out. 
and they, their nostrils prevent the sound from entering by closing in between their breaths. Oh, they can close their yeah. nostrils. Is that fun? <laughs> Thank you for pitying me. Yeah. yeah. She and had you back there. Everyone else was like, yeah. I'm sure a lot of Aussies know, but I don't think uh, overseas people listening will know. In Central Australia, there are several hundred thousand feral camels wandering around. <laughs> Basically, people were using camels to get around until the 1920s and 30s when camels were introduced. So many cameliers... Sorry, they were using camels until camels came. <laughs> Sorry, until cars were introduced. <laughs> They're quite different. Yeah. A slightly bigger camel has arrived. Well, get rid of the runts. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was using camels until uh, camels no. were introduced. So cars started taking off, and so the, the cameleers were like. Cars were taking off? Oh. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. yeah, they were. Uh, so that many of the cameleers let their camels go free, and the population, population just kept doubling in size. In 2008, there was estimated to be more than one million camels in Central Australia. But in 2013, this was revised to about three quarters of a million and then a lot were culled and these days, the population is believed to be about 300,000. But the first was a badass named Harry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. La, 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 long. La, 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 long, long, la, long, long, long. Girl, I want to make you... Look, to be honest, I'd try and scull that, but good luck getting that much Adelaide water down in one go. Oh. <laughs> Terrible stuff. <laughs> Terrible stuff. <laughs> no! <laughs> you. Love yourselves more. <laughs> Don't let him do that. The water is grotty. It's <laughs> no good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> good, good job, Dave. Good thank you. Well, that just brings us to the end of the show. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, first time, Man from Ireland, how'd you go? Yeah. Thank you so much. You so Imagine much. if you were like, absolute shit house. <laughs> no, he's too polite, but yeah, they'll no, leave and very he'll go, yeah, we're not going back to that again. <laughs> a very, very lovely person. Thank you. Sounded a little too sincere. <laughs> yeah. When you go too sincere, it sounds sarcastic. Yeah. You're a lovely person. We really yeah. appreciate yeah. you being here. Yeah, you went too sincere there, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I tell you what. To be genuinely sincere, we appreciate everyone coming out to our Adelaide show. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, Thank you're you very amazing. much. Thank you. People said it couldn't be done. Yeah. But we came to Adelaide and had a great time. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so so much. Yeah, well, a lot of people said don't do it. Yeah. yeah. But we did. Yeah. And you guys bought tickets and you made it uh, worth the trip over. So thank you very, 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 very much. Um, we will be hanging out after the show up the back, I believe. But what do we end up deciding up the back? We yeah. have uh, a couple of T-shirts left for sale. They yeah, are this is the last of this batch of T-shirts. We're not going to be reprinting this design. So if you want to grab a T-shirt, uh, we don't have heaps of sizes left, unfortunately. If you're a medium, uh, go up a size. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, that, yeah, we've got those. Um, we'd love it if you could help us clear them off if you would like them there's a couple as well um that are left from our uk tour so a couple of exclusive colors um <laughs> if you want to grab those <laughs> but also we'll just be up there if you want to come and say hello. you are such a retail pro yeah that no, is i worked in retail for too long um <laughs> So we, are, we will be up there. You don't, obviously don't have to buy anything. I'm just letting you know what's there. You can come say hello. You can just leave. Whatever you want. Um, live your lives. I don't care. But if you are going to hang around the wine centre for a couple of hours after this, I'll tell you what, a great show that I saw last night downstairs. Mr. Matt Stewart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was wondering. He was wondering. Who was it? Uh, yeah, well, who did you see? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm doing the show for uh, tonight at 8, but also till next Sunday at, at 8 o'clock. And it'll mm. be real good. Most nights there's been a couple of uh, do go on in. It's been very nice. Very cool. And it's, it's even funnier than this show. So, um... <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> Has anybody in the audience seen Matt's show yet this week? A few of you? Awesome. Great job. Thank you so much. Thank you for... <laughs> Cause, thank you for going because when, um, when shows go badly for him, he gets very grumpy and uh, he's a nightmare to be around. <laughs> it's a real diva. Um, thank you as well to the National Wine Centre. Yes, it's a beautiful venue. It's a fantastic venue. To Marcel and Elle running this and, and Scott, our tech. Thank you so much, Scott. There's so many shows going on here for the rest of the Fringe at the Wine Centre. So, yeah, check it out. It's a real great hub to hang around in, see a few shows back to back. 
But yeah, that just brings us into the show. We'll be out at the back even if you just want to come say hi. We'd love to meet all of uh, your, you Adelaide legends. But until next time, we'll say thank you so much for coming out. And until next time, goodbye. Laters. Cheers. Bye. Was that not just some of the best live theatre that you've ever heard? Um, it was just fantastic from start to finish. I sat here obviously listening to it all over again. Even though I don't have the recording on me, I just played it back in my mind. You know, that the memory of it is so good. But as a way to ease you out of the episode and that super high that you must be feeling right now of joy and whatnot, I thought I would do everyone's favourite segment of the show, the Patreon Reads. This is where we talk about some of our great Patreon supporters. If you want to support the show, uh, what one way you can do it um, is by joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash dogoonpod. And there's a bunch of different levels you can do uh, on there. And some of them have rewards, including bonus episodes. We do two bonus episodes a month. You can also get shout-outs at the end of the episode. Uh, you get a, I, I try and keep you up to date with a weekly newsletter of some sort. You get to hear what the upcoming topic is going to be for... For Book Cheat, uh, you get to hear what book it's going to be ahead of time, um, and we tell you what the topics are going to be for Do Go On and Primates as well, if you want to know about those. Uh, speaking of primates, this week's episode is a banger. It's my first one with an international guest. I spoke to a, a primate expert from uh, La La Land in America, in, in LA, and yeah, we had a really interesting chat, so I think that's worth listening to. That comes out tomorrow, but... Now it's time for the fact, quote, or question segment brought to you by a Patreon supporter. Each week we get a fact, a quote, or a question from one of our Patreons on a certain level. I think it's the Sydney Scheinberg level. Uh, may he rest in peace. Very sad news if you don't know Sydney Scheinberg, the man who uh, we're all so fond of here, passed away uh, during the week. Um, we didn't mention that on the show. We're, I think we're going to imagine in some time before too long we'll do a, a Sydney Scheinberg special. Um, but yeah, generally it was pretty amazing. A guy we'd never um, met or anything, but uh, we were all a bit bit devoured by that, a bit devastated by the news. It was very sad. Um, but anyhow, uh, a Sydney Scheinberg Memorial Patreon supporter is Zach Dobrin. It's his first time in the fact, quote, or question segment. And if you give us a fact, quote, or question, you also get to give yourself a title. And Zach has given himself the title Junior Assistant Director of Procrastination. Uh, he goes on to explain he's a history major, so he has major experience in procrastinating on historical research. So I think I can relate to you a little bit there, Zach. Uh, your quote you've given us, a quote which is great. Love a quote. We don't get heaps of those. But your quote is, There is something so human about taking something great and ruining it a little so you can have more of it. That's from Michael from The Good Place, played by Ted Danson. Great show. Love that show a lot. Uh, and a great quote. Thank you so much, Zach. What a guy. Uh, you're one of my favorite, probably even my favorite, junior assistant director of procrastination for the show. I really do appreciate all the fine work you do down there in the procrastination department. Um, it is pretty hectic in there sometimes. A lot of people getting not a lot done. Thank you so much, Zach. What a bloody top bloke now the other part of the patreon section is where we thank a few of our supporters normally jess comes up with a bit of a game but obviously here on my lonesome if you are fully shattered that uh you the others aren't helping read out the names and your name is written read out now maybe let us know and we'll do something about it um but i'll re i'm gonna do three we normally do six i'll just do three here today uh, they are for starters. Maybe I'll give you an animal. If you were a if you were a famous animal, I'll uh, I'll figure out what your famous animal would be with the power of my, my mind. Firstly, from Missouri City in Texas, America, it's Matt Lass. Matt Lass, the world is gone. Home. Don't know the words that song, unfortunately. The Matt Lass song. Missouri City. Let's see what your animal is there. If I Google Missouri City. And that'll come up with something very fascinating. 
Here we go. Oh, it's got a Wikipedia page. For those of you don't you don't know, uh, Wikipedia is a website which uh, sort of has a lot of information on it, and you can you can sort of log on, so to speak. I don't think you need to log in, but you can log on and check out what it has to say. Uh, okay, parks demographics doesn't have an animal section. Notable people: <gasps> Frank Beard from ZZ Top, the guy with the mustache. That's cool. Uh, Travis Scott. And Warren Moon. Okay, I don't actually know most of these people. Any of... Uh, oh, the Houston Astros pitcher Doug Bacall. And... Oh, Beyonce Knowles. Okay, that's a big one. Why didn't, you, they should, why didn't they lead off with that? She's buried down at number seven. Number six. No, nah, she's... I think she's number one there. That's pretty good. Uh... But no animal. All right, so I don't know what your I don't know what your native animal is. I'm going to assume it is, and this is also your animal now, uh, Matt. You are the Missouri City Wolf Dog. You big old wolf dog, and I mean that as an absolute compliment. Thank you so much, Matt. You bloody legend from Missouri City, Texas. The Wolf Dog of Missouri City. Good boy. All right, and secondly, from Carlsbad, New Mexico. I'm guessing NM is New Mexico or North Melbourne in the United States. I'm saying New Mexico. Uh, Carlsbad, that's a bit rough on Carl. I wonder what he did to cop that from a whole city. Carlsbad. Hey, Carl's all right, isn't he? Carlsbad. There is one in New Mexico, according to Wikipedia. Did I say your name? If I didn't. From Carlsbad in New Mexico, it's Derek Brigham. Bring him here. Brigadier. Oh, that's fun. Derek. Nice one, Derek. Oh, this looks like a nice city. It's right down the bottom, bottom center of America. I just look, I just scrolled past it said Carlsbad. Uh, the rediscovery of Carlsbad Caverns, then known as Bat Cave. I wonder if that was where the Batman is from. Carlsbad. That's cool. Uh, mining. Potash is a potassium potassium containing compound used as a fertilizer. Wow. So it sounds like there's a bit going on there. You've got fertilizers. Uh, you've got healthcare. Carlsbad Medical Center is the primary hospital facility serving the greater Carlsbad area. Operated by community health systems. Bloody hell. There is a big... All right, now notable people. Here we go. Let's see if I've heard of any of these. You've got Barry Sadler. Okay, I don't know who that is. You've got Sonny Throckmorton. Apparently a singer and songwriter. Sonny Throckmorton. John Wooten. No, these are made... Sorry, I think these might all be made up. Um, Sorry. Sorry, you don't have any real ones. Shane Andrews from... He's played in Major League Baseball. That's something. Oh, hang on. Bruce Cabot or Bruce Cabot. He's the actor who played Jack Dris- Driscoll in the 1933 film King Kong, and appeared uh, in many as in, appeared in many of close friend John Wayne's films. Okay, Bruce Cabot. Now that sounds familiar. Bruce Cabot. Oh, look at him go, Bruce Cabot. Yep. All right. Well done. He was also in the Last of the Mohicans, Fritz Lang's Fury, Dodge City. Yeah, you've done well there. Well done indeed. So that is, uh, I'm going to call it Derek Brigham. I need to, so Bruce Cabot, you are, again, I didn't see any Carlsbad animals, but I'm going to give you, your animal is going to be the Bruce Cabot, you're the Bruce Cabot black bear, which is an animal that converts from a bear into a Bruce Cabot. When the moon is nearly full. When it's a full moon, it's nothing happens. But it's nearly full, you become Bruce Cabot and you act in movies. So that that's cool. Derek? Yeah? Derek, that's cool? Okay? We're going to say that's cool. Okay, Derek? Okay, that's cool. I'm sitting in a bedroom talking to myself. Okay. So let's just say that's cool, Derek. Thanks, mate. And finally... From Cicero in IL, which is probably Illinois, 
It's Miguel Angel Perez. Holy moly. Fantastic name. Let's see where Sicaro is. Sicaro. Okay. Let's come up with Cicero, uh, the Roman statesman. Let me see. Cicero. Illinois. Yes. Okay. Originally known as Hawthorne. Is a suburb of Chicago. Ah, Chicago, the windy city. So close to Gary. Have you been? Tell me you've been. Please tell me, Miguel, you've been to Gary. God damn it. Why would you live so close to Gary and not in Gary? Doesn't make any sense. Let's see who your notable people are before I give you an animal. Another very uh, imaginative animal. Doesn't seem to have any. Oh, you don't have any at all. You've got landmarks, including. Chodal Auditorium. <laughs> You've got the Chodal. I mean, I didn't realize you had Chodal there. That's great. Which is obviously located inside Morton East High School. Built in 1924 and completed in 1927. It replaced the 1,200-seat auditorium, which was destroyed by fire. Chodal Auditorium. But did you pick up that car going past? Pretty cool. Yeah, I live near a road. Uh, what else have we got here? It's got a fire department. In popular culture. Okay, here we go. Joby Cerny, or Cherny, is an actor from Cicero and is the voice of the Pillsbury Doughboy. Huh? That sounds like that would mean something to American people. Uh, it's mentioned as the hometown of Jimmy McGill slash Saul Goodman in the Better Call Saul pilot episode Uno. That's pretty good. And in Guys and Dolls, the Chicago area gangster... Big Julie claims to be from East Cicero, or Chicaro, Illinois. And also pronounces the final S on Illinois. Illinois, that's fun. All right, great. Now, we need an animal for you. I want an Illinois animal. Illin... Grand... Oh, groundhogs are native there. Oh, it's hard to go past that. Mallard ducks. You've got the Eastern Cottontail rabbit. Lake Sturgeon. Okay, Miguel Angel Perez, MP. You are going to be called, I think, I'm getting a real vibe. Coyote's just such a fun, I'm going to call you, you are the Cicero Coyote. And I'm so sorry I'm pronouncing that wrong. Chicaro, Cicero, you probably say it different to I would. Anyway, Miguel, thank you so much for your support. Derek as well, and Matt, what a... What a trio of American citizens you are. Texas, New Mexico, and Illinois. Three of the great 50 states of the United States of America. Thank you so much for your support. If you do want to support us, as I said before, you can go to patreon.com slash do go on pod. And then one day we'll be reading out your name and speaking some gibberish. Thank you so much for everything. Uh, what else should I tell you? If you want to find us online, you go to do go on pod.com and that should link to everything. But uh, if you want to go direct to Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, do go on pod is what we are on all of those. Do go on pod at gmail.com if you want to email. Um, if you could give us a five star review, that would mean so much. Uh, really would. And it'd be great to see you at live shows if you're in or near Melbourne or Thailand, the island of Koh Samui. And yes, we will hope to have more info about uh, more live shows soon um, coming to other cities around Australia and. Bloody fingers crossed that we can move on America sometime before too long. It is proving a little more tricky than we realise, but we I'm sure we're going to make it happen. Um, yes, let me know if you've got any questions or feedback or anything, as always, uh, on the social medias or whatnot. Give us a five-star review, and thanks so much for joining us, and uh, let's see you. Well, how does Dave normally finish? He says, we'll see you next week or something, and then I go, laters, and Jess says, this podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you. 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 It's up to you.